Hi, I'm Rich. Welcome to Trapping Inc. Well, today I'm putting the uh, new Range Road 20 ton uh, wood processor and, and the, the lifter and infeed here to work. Sandy had discovered that I was sleeping about six hours a night and she figured I could shave a few hours of that off <laughs> occasionally. So she bought a, a logging truck uh, worth of, of birch logs and it was uh, 70,000 pounds, 35 tons is what it was. And I've ran it through. I was doing a review on, on the machine, I ran it through it and uh, uh, you'll see it up, up on our YouTube site, uh, what I think of the machine and its capabilities. But, but today, we are out chasing Martin and Fisher. Stick with us. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter, and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. Are you enjoying the last coffee? I am. Checking a little Facebook, doing a little bit of updates, adding some people on Facebook. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting ready. Obviously, we've had breakfast this morning. The kitchen's a little disarrayed, but we're just getting ready to head out and set some more boxes for Martin and Tra um, Martin and Trapping. <laughs> Martin and Fisher. <laughs> you better get some more coffee in I, I think I should. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, looking forward to the day. It's actually a pretty mild day out there for It November. was. It's, it's actually 20 degrees warmer than when I left here on Thursday. They knew I was coming. <laughs> the princess. Yeah, that's me. So this is our first box site on the southwest. Bears are dicks. Bears. Look at this. Bears are still dicks. Look, look, look at the hair all over that. Oh. Let's get a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> and here's my screen. Oh, there's your screen. <laughs> so I don't need a screen, but this and that. I guess I should, uh... I should throw some meat in this and put the screen on her before I nail her back up, huh? Probably a good idea. Want to see what's on the recipe for today? The menu? The menu? This is why the, what do you call this thing on the front of the Argo? Why it's really critical. The cargo that. rack? Because <laughs> Good. That that doesn't need to ride in the Argo with us. Oh, does it smell? And eventually, throughout the day, Rich will be leaving his gloves outside as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got which which one of special recipe this uh, one or two? I don't know. Let's do special recipe one. Smell vision. <laughs> <laughs> Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Old Smokes Coffee, crafted coffee for the courageous. Get your favorite brew online at oldsmokescoffee.com. Halfords, unique beyond compare. In store or online, we have all your trapping needs. Find us online at halfordsmailorder.com. 
Range Road Enterprises. See our full line of firewood processors, wood splitters, sawmills, and more online at range-road.ca. Carl's Ice Sport Optics. It's not just a rifle scope, it's a relationship for life. See the new V4 models online at gentech-intl.com. You can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites. I got a, a hole in the back at the top. It makes that easy to go on. This rest has one nail in it here. Oh, there's snow coming. Plus it rests on top of the box. I think I need a different nail. <laughs> Are you smart enough to put nails in your pocket? Oh, I'm sure I do something. I just gotta check enough pockets. There'll be a nail in one of them. There we go. go make note of where that hammer landed because I'll be leaving it there <laughs> <laughs> how often does that happen far too often usually you've got it painted some bright color but I see that most of the bright color on that one is kind of it's wore off, wore off. well you know what happens though is, is that all the time I can go review my footage at the end of the day because we filmed just about everything and I will Oh yeah, that's where I left yeah, it. That's where I left it. I'll pick it up tomorrow when I go check. <laughs> yeah, go back, kick through the snow, and there it is. This box is uh, good every year for a fisher, and uh, I got a 160 on it. We use both uh, 120 and 160 uh, body grips. Um, body grips are law in Canada, and Different brands and sizes are approved for different um, animals. So just in case no one ever has ever seen this little trick before, um, just explain what you just did with that clasp there. Well, when he trips it, this this will fall out of here and he hangs out. And then I don't have any problems with... Uh... <sighs> <laughs> I hope your breakfast... I hope my breakfast doesn't come back up. <laughs> Then I don't have any problems with, with, with squirrels or mice or anything eating on the fur. The fur hangs free and clear and no damage. Uh, we have a... And no pitch or anything from no. the trees rubbing up against it or anything. This, this tree doesn't have, you know... No, you, but But there, we do have some yeah. some trees that have lots of pitch, so there we go. I didn't take long. No. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. You may not be able to see it, but it's a great big... <laughs> evergreen that's down across the trail so there's no uh, really going around it this is why the chainsaw rides up front yeah well done honey <laughs> people that know me and those of you who are just getting to know me know that I really like to stay warm. It's really nice and warm inside the Argo. <laughs> yeah, the temp is up, isn't it? Yeah. You see all the snow flying as we uh, as we bust through this? This is all fresh snow and we haven't got a track through it yet. And yeah. It's sure nice to have the top up because the snow is flying everywhere and it would suck. Yeah, I remember such a, a weekend once upon a time when we didn't have a, a lid on the Argo. And someone told me if I wanted to stay warm, I should run along behind the Argo. It's okay, I can get this. Don't, don't yeah, bother no, yourself. I, right? I know, you're very capable. <laughs> I have confidence in you, honey. You know what this means? What does this mean? This means there's lots of fur up here this year. They're trying to bar the door. That's what it means. <laughs> and now for Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. What to use when we're cutting cable and cutting wire, which we use so much of in trapping. Um, a high quality set of what's called a side cutting pliers. These are channel locks. These are Milwaukee's, both pretty good brand names, uh, will work. Um, anything will cut wire, uh, bypassing, you know, slip joint pliers, uh, Leatherman or whatever. 
Cable is a whole different story and you need something that's good. These have high quality jaws that meet together and they, they basically crush their way through. They are more difficult to use just because it takes a lot of force to do it. This is what's called a, uh, an actual cable cutter and they have bypassing jaws, jaws that go by one another. They don't cut by crushing, but by, by bypassing one another, and they're much easier to use. They cut a re do, do a really nice cut on the end. There's no burrs, there's no crushing, there's no nothing. So I like to have both uh, general use out on the trap line. You've seen me use a ton of these. You've seen me lose a ton of them. Uh, these I like to use when I'm uh, making up uh, my snares and cables and that, because you're doing so much cutting, a lot easier on my old arthritic hands. That was Helford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. Gotta put a couple pieces in. That's what that screen's for. Yeah, I know. I uh, I oh, did a little shot of it with one of the one that had a screen in the back. Yeah, well, otherwise people will will take and. And they'll wire it in there, or they'll just throw it in there behind the trap, figuring that when the animal gets caught, then, then uh, you know, they, whatever it gets ate, it falls out, or, or, or whatever. The thing about this is that it, so many weasels and squirrels and I go back and forth through your trap without getting caught. It's amazing how often that happens, especially when you, when you come up and you've got two squirrels or two weasels in a, in a trap. That means that there was two of them in there at once. And uh, then one of them made the mistake and stepped on the on the trigger. Uh, I, uh, I don't mind them being in there because, uh, well, weasels were worth a few bucks last year, but squirrels are worth nothing. Like we have bundles of squirrels that we've been holding on to. They're just worth nothing. And uh, flying squirrels, there is no market for. So, like, they don't, they have zero value. They don't even, uh, nobody will take them. Mm-hmm. Every uh, spring, oh, that didn't work out so good. <laughs> Every spring, when I'm doing up my winter beaver, I take and uh, I got them. I'll take those those two year olds, you know, those 40, 45 pounders. I'll take and gut a bunch of them. I'll throw the guts in a in a 45 gallon barrel, and let it sweeten for wolf bait. And then I'll uh, I'll take and chop them up and put them in these these 10 liter uh, Rubbermaid totes. And believe it or not, it takes a dozen of those 40 pound beaver to fill three of those. That's how efficient you you are in uh, in packing and stacking. It's not very big. No, 10 liters, but man, is it heavy when it's when it's done, but <laughs> we've just about used our first 10 liters of, of beaver. Well, that's the way I like it. <laughs> I actually set this this morning. And you can see it's uh, just before sunset. Beautiful, Martin. And of course he's soft, even though it's a very cold day. We're in the... Uh, Mid to uh, minus 20s, but pretty good sized Martin. Uh, in a 160, beautiful catch. They don't last long in that. Uh, I will uh, be able to take him out of here. Just because uh, I know he's nice and soft. It takes them, even in this temperature, it takes a whole day before they freeze so much that you can't take them out. body grips always make sure that you get yourself a, a setter that has a, a latch on it makes life so easy you don't have to be constantly fighting and holding it this is a part of my line really soft really soft and he is so soft <laughs> it is a he right yeah um, this is part of my line that I haven't uh, trapped for a few years. You can see that box got a little bit gnawed on by the by the squirrels, and it um, 
I was going to actually replace it. Actually, I just about didn't set it this morning. I think thinking, well, I would bring another box with me, but I'm sure glad I did. <laughs> it's still got the job done. I'll take and uh, that's a big one. Holy cow. That is a big one. I'll take and get uh, this all set back up here. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Old Smokes Coffee, crafted coffee for the courageous. Get your favorite brew online at oldsmokescoffee.com. Argo, go anywhere. Argo Extreme Terrain Vehicles conquer any season, any terrain. Join us online at argoxtv.com. Midland Radio, communication for every adventure. Find the all-new X-Talker online at gentech-intl.com. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine, Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. Online at albertaoutdoorsman.ca. You can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites. See what happened here? Yeah, I'm going to replace it. Or I'm going to cut this wider or something, but see this? Yeah. This this jammed right in here. And it wouldn't fall out. Yeah, it didn't even release all the way, see? Yeah. So... He was there and see his nose got a little chewed up. But look at the size of him. Look yeah. at look at the four white paws. Oh, he's a beauty. He's huge. That's another, like, that's, that's, that'll go tri triple XL, I'll bet you. Wow. So what happened here? Oh no, they couldn't get it. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. I uh, put two screens in here because this top, <laughs> come here, see this? Well, you might have to. This top got all ate out by the squirrels and I didn't have another box with me so I put two screens in there <laughs> and the meat in between so it worked out pretty good. But <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? It's very cool. Look at the size of him though. I mean, look look at the size of him in your hands. Yeah. Wow. He's a big one. Yeah. I'll uh, probably just, I'm gonna customize that slot a little bit and I'll get a trap back up in there. Cool. Here. So one last thing to do here, and that is to set a waypoint. Yeah, because we you, you can get too much snow, you're in the dark, in the blizzard, whatever, uh, having the backup of the GPS, or if somebody else has to check my line for me, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like to throw down a, a, a waypoint. So mark waypoint. Now, this says that it is marked as waypoint number 131. It's got a blue box on it, which which means uh, that that is a 120. If it was a 160, I, I would have a green box, so I'll go save. I'll go back to my map. There you go. You see, I got, I got a blue box underneath me. And uh, we are ready to rock. Perfect. Okay, this is uh, an unusual situation. It's the first time that this has happened to me in 42 years of being with Argo. But you see this through here. You can see where I was breaking through uh, the little bit of ice there was. We had this foot of fluffy snow come and nothing was frozen. And so it, it took and uh, broke through. You can see up, up on front here. And what happened was because I was breaking through, uh, you know, your track is constantly wet. And, and so that, that water attracts the snow, that fluffy snow sticks to it. And then it all starts to freeze onto the, uh, the track cleats and the track joints. Well, I bet you my tracks at uh, certain points, I bet you they weighed a thousand pounds each. They were so heavy and full. And, and uh, then they, the track joints would start hitting on the underside of the uh, of the catwalk. So I'd have to get out there and use a hammer and, and bust it off. It was like a, uh, an episode of Deadliest Catch here. <laughs> 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 Only without the, the, without the great seafood. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 115 kilometers today. That is a long trip. It was a long day and it was uh, just like three minutes shy of seven hours. <laughs> yeah. I will let the guys out. They're going to want to check out the fur. Oh yeah. Because well, they... Fuddy is the, is the fur master. Yeah, but I think because he is, so are the others. <laughs> I'll get them out. Oh. That one sure got pretty white boots, didn't it? Yes. Well, 
this is Gunner's first go at it. Yeah. What's that, Gunner? Huh? What's that? What's that? And Fudd's very happy that you brought some fur home for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to get a, a fire going in the skinning shed so I can uh, warm these guys up and skin them. And I'll bet you'd like some coffee. Oh, do I want coffee? You need to make me some coffee. <laughs> Wasn't that cool, the four white feet on that Martin? The variety of wildlife is always astounding. Our season has started really slow between the no frost and then snow and then the cold. And so we're way behind on, on getting our, our lines opened up, getting the work done, but we're getting at it. It's looking good. There's plenty of sign. We're excited about the rest of the season. We will see you guys down the line.